Good morning, Bobby. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. How hey, Bobby. You doing this morning. How you doing this morning? I'm doing fine, Coach. Hey, Bobby. Uh, tell me how your daughter's doing. I don't want to talk about Marlon right now. He gets enough publicity. Tell us about your daughter. Or you got two daughters <laughs> or just one? Well, I got one that's still in school. Okay. Uh, my, tell us about my her. My oldest daughter is in. Uh, she uh, graduated from UAB communication degree, and she's working at a company down in Jackson, Florida, called Jack TV. So she's having a good time down there. She's the director of social media. So okay, and she's doing good. She's doing. She's liking it down in Jacksonville. Good. Yeah, but, but I'm assuming you're talking about my daughter who's uh, running track at LSU. Well, I'm talking about both your daughters. Hey, you're proud of all your kids. I want to hear about all of them. <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, Brittany is, uh, is is coming is, is starting to come into her own down there as a tiger. So we got to uh, – I don't know what we're going to do about that. But, but she's down there, and she's doing well, and she's kind of got in gear, and, and uh, she seemed to be sitting in down there pretty good and okay. So things are going well with her. They haven't started <laughs> – They've started off-season training, so they actually don't start the season until later on this December, 1st of January. So she's at LSU? Yes, sir. Okay, good. She's at LSU. A great program they have, a track and field program they have. and uh, Coach, Coach Shaver does very very well down there. He's uh, known for hurdlers, so, uh, you know, it's kind of one of the reasons she really, you know, liked LSU starting out when she was in sixth grade because they – they always advertise them about some of their hurdles, you know, in certain, you know, college and wellness championship meets. So, Bobby, but she's uh, doing well. Thanks for asking, guy. I, I could hardly hear. You. Bobby, secondary yeah, yeah. coaches, at, secondary coaches at Alabama, they change. You know, was one, one left and went to Georgia, and even came in. At, was at Kentucky? Do do they do they teach? Does Coach Saban? school them and how he wants it taught or does each individual defensive backfield coach do it the way he wants to do it? Well, I would, I would imagine they teach the way Coach Saban wants to talk. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm, uh, by, by that I mean, uh, you know, all the the drills and so forth, I guess the whole deal is, is it, is it uh, I just wonder how that went together. Well, I, I think they all, I think they, they both work together. You know, Saban still, you know, if you ever see in the video or footage of him, if you've been to a practice, you know that yeah. he is always working with defensive backs. So yeah. they kind of split it up. You have a secondary coach who's responsible for the entire secondary, yeah. but you also have uh, Saban's input, um, and and also he works with the uh, he works with the corner specifically, and the secondary coach kind of works with the uh, with the safety. The other thing uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, and I don't know. I used to come out and watch y'all practice, and of course I like to watch all the football coaches practice while I was there. Um, is the is coach is coach Saban stuff a little bit more defined, or a little bit more uh, complicated? I don't, I don't know. If complicated is the right word, but more different more different looks than when you played defensively. Well, I think I think what he does, he does a variety of coverage. Yeah. and combos and man press. He, he do a lot of things. So uh, I don't think it's complicated. I think once once you get to it, it's pretty easy. But it, it's pretty it's pretty simple, you know. Sometimes you, and he disguises everything a lot. Yeah. You know, sometimes you don't know when he's playing his own. Uh, he don't show it right off the snap, pre snap. He doesn't show whether or not he's playing his own bell coverage. You know, man press, man off. Uh, you know, or combo. You know, a lot yeah. of times he'll play some combo, and I found this out from Marl. I said, Marl, it looked like you didn't really have your guy. He said, Well, it may have looked like that, but uh, because I had a combo help with a, either safety or inside linebacker or something like that. Yeah. So they got different coverages based on formation and motions and things. Now that's a complicated part. Of that. Yeah, I think it's complicated so. when a younger, a, well, someone who hadn't been in the system very long comes in, and you got. You got you got two a two receiver set to your side, then you get a motion to your side. Now you got a three receiver set. When you get a three receiver set, the call that was made initially has just changed to another call. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's the complicated side of it is being able to know and read. And he he plays he plays a lot with reading what the matchup and what the actual formation is, and it's also based off you know tendency as well. But yeah, it can be complicated for somebody who don't know um, 
who don't know what they're watching. I remember my when I used to go out and watch practice a lot. Uh, when Marlon was a freshman, I used to be on the sideline and uh, I was standing next to one of the coaches and I was like, man, Marlon just let this can't be them all. I said, man, you don't know what Marlon's doing out there. He could be doing something <laughs> different. So, and he was right. Yeah. I asked Marlon out of practice, Marlon, why you didn't do this and do that? And he said, well, I didn't suppose to do that. I supposed to do this. Yeah. So to the eye, it may seem a little different, but to them, they know exactly what they're doing and what they're trying to prevent and what they're trying to force the defense, force the offense to do. Uh, Bobby is Barry. I wanted to ask you uh, when situation went down with the other defensive back transferring to Georgia. I won't even say his name, but you know it got so much publicity. And I saw your son come out. I think he tweeted how much he respected his coaches. He was behind his coaches. Uh, he just seems like a guy that uh, wants to be coached, uh, respects authority there. So you and your wife done a good job there. I just want to hear you comment when I hear him talk in the media. Uh, the, he's so intelligent, says the right things. That's got to make you feel good as a dad. It does. It does. And that's the way we've always, you know, that's the way we were brought up. And, and by the help of the Lord, that's the way we tried to bring bring our kids up, you know. You know, uh, with some, you know, you know, you know, obey those that have rule over you, respect elderly, you know, don't talk back. And, you know, all the things that, uh, that that young people need to, you know, need to live by and try to do, you know, as they develop as young people. And, but I think the most important thing about him is that he he gets to learn and and get better. And I, and I really feel that he feels close saving can help him get to where he's trying to go. And uh, and I think that's the reason for that. Uh, he loves where he's at. He he enjoys college life, and uh, he loves playing. You know, he loves playing on Saturday. So, and he wants to be prepared to be able to do the, you know, to be able to make plays and, and, uh, not just for self gratification, but also for the fans, for the family and friends and everybody who's coming to watch. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he does a very good job. Uh, you know, you know, obviously he still has some things that he needs to work on, uh, cause, you know, he's not there yet. Uh, but, uh, He's he's willing and he's willing to he's willing to learn and that's the most important. Yeah, let's let's talk about this past game. You know, Marlon's kind of like you. He like you don't ever, you never want to get tackled. Marlon never wants a receiver ever to catch a ball on him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw a couple of plays where Chad Kelly. I mean, you went back. He said, "Man, that was on Humphrey." But the guy threw the ball the only place it could be to catch the ball, and I could see Marlon was on the ground, and he hit himself in the helmet. Like, I can't believe I gave up that. But that's what makes him so good. But but Chad Kelly did make some great throws. Just give us some comments on the, on what you saw there I, in the game. I, I, you know, Chad Kelly, I went back and I, I kind of watched the game two or three times just to see where the placement of the ball was. And there, was two, there were two plays I think you may be talking about. The one was deep ball that uh, – yeah that the guy jumped and caught, where it looked like Marlon was in position and uh, looked like he was more uh, trying to attack the ball than to prevent the receiver from catching. It's the way I look at it. And, you know, the thing you do in that situation, you just don't – if you can't catch the ball, you just don't let the other guy catch the ball, which, uh, which I think he wasn't in a good position to catch the ball. I think the guy had position on – and Kelly just threw a – he just threw a really, really great throw. I mean – I mean, he threw several in that game that were that were just flat unbelievable. Where our guys had super duper excellent coverage, uh, and you know he probably you know he probably got frustrated because that was a play he felt like he could make. He was right there, he was in position, and uh, the, the receiver had a little better position on him. Uh, but that's the competitive nature that he had. You know, he wants to he wants to make a play on every 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 pass that's thrown his way. Uh, you know, he had one or two to get. You know. They kind of they get caught on, and, and, and you know he's just a competitive young man. And, uh, you know, if he keeps that attitude, he's going he's going to be pretty good. If he if he gets disappointed with somebody catching a ball on him, so. <laughs> well, he does. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That Bobby, um, Coach, I, I don't try to compare Coach Brian and Coach Savings about this. There's two different eras, but I will compare them this way and let you comment. Um, they don't mind jumping a guy pretty heavily, but when they jump guys. Back in the minds of the guys who have been jumped, they know that the coach cares about them. And I think you see both those characteristics 
uh, in Coach Saban and Coach Bryant. But, you know, the other stuff's different. But I, I think they have the same type of characteristic there. You know, I knew, I, I, I played for neither one, but uh, just but I've heard uh, I've heard former players talk about that played for Coach Bryant talk about that same exact thing. Yeah, uh, there's a uh, there's a discipline there. There's a challenge to be better there, uh, to be great, not just average, but to be great. And it comes with a little bit of uh, discipline, a little bit getting on them. And the guys understand that, and they don't want to. Dis- Most of those guys that I see that play for Coach Bryant and the ones that play for Coach Saban now, they don't want to disappoint him. Yeah, but All they right. feel Good like point. you care and love them so much. Yeah. And and uh, when you got a coach that that uh, that can get on you and discipline you and tell you what you need to do and get at you when you do something wrong, you kind of feel that that person really loves you and uh, and really cares for you. And I, and I agree, both of those coaches were the same way. Uh, Bobby, uh, we're talking with Bobby Humphrey. Let's talk a minute about Jalen Hurts. He kind of has the thing I say you can't coach, and that's a calmness on the field where things don't really rattle him. He just kind of – dad calls it cool, not in a bad way, in a, in a positive way that he's hard to rattle. He says, hey, I fumbled the first possession. All right, let's go get him the next, next time we get out there. Did you ever play with guys like that that just – that young that just came out and, and nothing really seemed to bother him. The moment wasn't too big. I, I kind of equated to James Robinson in, in, in basketball. You know, he'd be playing Kentucky, down one, shooting a big-time free throw, and he'd blow a bubble at the foul line like it was no big deal, you know. Did you ever play with guys like that? And comment on Jalen. I, I really have never – I can't remember uh, ever playing with a guy like that, Yeah, especially that young. Uh, just, Just – Calm and cool, and and really just under control. Like you said, situation the moment is not too big for him. Uh, and it's, it's just very impressive the way that kid handled himself on Saturday. I mean, it's uh, to be a, a freshman quarterback. Eight, I think I don't even think he's nineteen. He may be still eighteen years old. And and that and I was there on Saturday, and that place was uh, that place was rocking. <laughs> uh, it was loud. It was, uh, and for him to have that kind of composure and that calmness about him, and you can see it kind of he kind of played a factor in the role of his teammates. He didn't get rattled when he came to the sideline. He wasn't. He wasn't pointing fingers at who missed their block or what happened, and you guys get in gear, none of that. He, you know, he got that's a special individual right there that can do that. No uh, doubt. And, well, that's uh, just something you can't you can't teach that either. You got it or you don't, or either experience has to give it to you. But to have it, <laughs> and like you said, at eighteen as a freshman, never been your first SEC road game, your first game against Southern Cal. You come in, you fumble the first snap. Uh, when you get in, it's just it's incredible to me what this kid's doing. Yeah, it, it is, and uh, I, you know I, I I would think that a lot of it would have to do with the way his dad, you know, trained him because I, I, I've heard his dad was a coach. I don't know if his dad coached him in high school, but you know maybe it has to do with a lot of his father kind of telling him know the situations and don't get upset about the situation and be prepared for anything that can happen. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just. I, I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah. I mean, and it's twice he's done it. You know, he's done it in the USC game, like you mentioned. Uh, but this game, it was, you know, was, was on a big stage. We hadn't beat him in two years. You know, we on the road. It's the SEC opponent. That's a, all those are pressure points that somebody can get really tight about. But he didn't seem to be tight at all. He was calm. Nope, not at all, Dad. Well, I don't really have anything else. Just want to the state of Bobby that, uh, you know, you did a great job with, with Marlon. He's, he knows how to play, but he also knows how to act off the off the field. And I, I just, you know, the job that you did when you played, I was there when you were playing and what a player you were. And uh, you've, you've carried it over to him. And I want to congratulate you for that, that's for sure. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I had a great time there when I was there and uh, – uh, off the time, I wish I can go back all up and do it again. And, 
Yeah. And make sure I don't miss all the things that I missed and, and try to do it and perfect it a little better. But, yeah. you know, it's almost like uh, I feel like I'm living it all over again through him. Yeah. Just being in the stand, watching and being there on game day and enjoying the moment that he's in. Sure. Uh, but uh, I'm enjoying it from a different perspective. And uh, and I'm taking advantage of it. I'm solving it all up, and I'm 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 I'm, I, I, I'm excited about you know the team and him and, and being there. And uh, and my wife Barbara gets all the credit for all the things that he does from a standpoint of off the field and and being respectful and all those things because she's done a good job. She's coached him before, so uh, she's done a great job, and we both done a great job in trying to make sure he does the right thing. We just hope he continues to stay that way. And, as he develops and as he get older and just remember all the things he's been taught while he's there at home and the things he's been taught there at Alabama. Yeah. Well, Bobby, we appreciate it. If you do get to come back again, don't hang around Scott Goldsmith as much as you did in college, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later, Bobby. I knew, you, right. I knew you'd like that one. See you, buddy. All right, Bobby. <laughs>